What's up YouTube, Jerry Land here with Nova Tech, and I got a holiday gift guide coming your way. So, whether you're looking for a great holiday tech gift or Christmas gift for your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, or anyone in your family that loves tech, check out my channel. Make sure to hit that subscribe button below so you can find out when that next video comes out. So today what I got for you is a video about the best three axis gimbals on the market, handheld, battery powered smoothness that'll just make your footage look amazing. I actually have three today that I wanna show you, so whether you're looking for a three axis gimbal for your GoPro, your smartphone, or even a DSLR or mirrorless camera, you've come to the right video. So I found this company called Skylab. They're a pretty new company, but their products are incredibly innovative, and Skylab sells these gimbals at Best Buy, but you can also check out their website, I'll make sure to link that below. But today from Skylab, I have two gimbals. So I have a GoPro gimbal as well as a smartphone gimbal. And I'm not going to show you that much of the smartphone one because everything I cover in the GoPro one is almost exactly the same in the smartphone one, except it has a smartphone mount that can mount any smartphone that you have. Probably without a case, but you could probably get away with some cases too, depending on what you got. So check this guy out. This guy is Skylab's three axis gimbal for GoPros. You can fit a Hero 3, a Hero 4, you can even fit a lot of those Xiaomi or just those off-brand little GoPro looking action cameras in here as well. That is one of the reasons why I love this one because you can support all different kinds of cameras so you're not stuck with a gimbal that only works with GoPro. So as you can see, it says only at Best Buy. That's pretty cool, they're working with Best Buy. So right inside the box we get some information, warranty card, pamphlet, put that aside. Inside, we get a few different cables. We have a micro USB cable. We have this extra little cable, probably for firmware updates. You have the gimbal itself. Let's pull that out. Check it out. Ah, ooh, very sturdy construction. I like it. This is literally almost all metal. It feels super solid. And this right here, let's see if I can get it out. There it is. Batteries and a battery charger. Powers off micro USB, so you can just plug this into a portable battery bank and you can charge on the go, love that. And that's all that comes inside the box. So there's batteries right here, but let's see if there's actually already batteries in it too. Oh guys, extra batteries. Skylab, props to you, awesome. So let's say you're on the go, you're at a shoot, you're using your gimbal, you run out of juice, you got an extra set waiting for you, you plop the extra set in, then you throw these dead ones on there to charge, that's awesome. And at the bottom, we have some threads, so you can throw this on top of a tripod if you want to. You can put a mini tripod on this so you can set it on a table. I know a lot of people like to do that with their gimbals. So, you've got options. Options are great. So, let's take a look around the unit. I see a micro USB port right here. Oh, I see the, the special little cable right here. There's a little port on the actual gimbal portion. Okay, so up top, you'll see the mounting plate. The way it works is it doesn't screw directly onto your GoPro or action camera. You actually slot your action camera in, then you tighten the screws up a little bit to whatever it fits. Yeah, it's, it's actually a decently wide slot, so you can definitely fit a few different types of action cameras in here. Let's just go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. Oh, there it goes. It's gone crazy. Oh, I'm turning it off. Okay. Turned it off. Okay, so check this out. Fair warning, if you turn this gimbal on without a camera inside it, the motors will go haywire. Check this out, I'm turning it on. Ah, you can see it spinning, you can see it, it's vibrating like crazy, you can probably hear that. That's not good for my gimbal, so I'm gonna turn it off. For science, for you guys, I just wanted to show you. So, I turned it off, I'm gonna go get my GoPro. All right, so here's my GoPro Hero 4 Silver. I got the blackout housing on it, I love it. Let's take it out and let's try to throw it on the gimbal. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how easy it is to install your GoPro onto this guy. It's not like other gimbals like the DSLR or video gimbals that are huge and you have to balance them and are crazy to use. I'm gonna loosen the screws up a bit. I'm gonna take my GoPro and I'm gonna slot it in there. Oh, there it is, nice and snug. Push it all the way in and I'm gonna tighten it up. Tightening, tightening, tightening and there it is guys, check it out. My GoPro Hero 4 Silver, hashtag Jerry Goes Pro if you ever wanna check out my GoPro stuff. I don't post that much, but I should start posting more. And let's turn on the gimbal, see what happens. Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> Do you guys see that? Like I said, no balancing needed. Don't screw it up, don't try to put anything heavy on this, and don't turn it on without a camera in it, cause it'll start going crazy. Check this out, guys. Ooh, look how smooth that is. And there are all different modes that you can go into. They're all in the instructions, but check this out. Look how stable and smooth that is. Here we go, let's switch modes. I double tap. Oh, now when I twist my wrist, it'll follow slowly and smoothly. If 
I go up and down, follow slowly and smoothly. I'll tap three times, let's see what happens. Oh, check it out, it's completely locked. It's locked on center when you tap three times. Locked on center, let's go four times. So when you tap four times, you can go left and right, but up and down is locked on. Let's try five times. All loosey goosey, and there's a little joystick on it. Amazing, check this out. The joystick is inverse, so if I push the joystick left, it'll turn right. If I push the joystick right, it turns left. I can tilt up and down also, pan left and right. One of the reasons why I like it so much compared to others, because I know there's tons out there. This guy's nice and lightweight. The battery actually lasts a long time. This guy has over 150 minutes of runtime on just one charge of these batteries, and they give you two. So you can be running and gunning, shooting for 300 minutes without needing to charge. So one of the downsides that I noticed about this guy is the fact that it can't rotate 360 degrees. So check this out. Almost, it locks right there, so it can't keep going all the way around. Whereas the Pilot Fly H2, it can just keep going, which is a pretty cool feature. The three axis gimbal is amazing. The joystick works extremely well. If you've never tried a gimbal, Today's the day, guys. You gotta try it. It really does change your footage. It changes the game. You can get so many extra shots with just a gimbal. Instead of using a slider and a fluid head, if you just stick this on any old tripod, you're able to pan and tilt smoothly. You're able to get smooth walking footage, even running footage. It's smooth as butter. You guys really gotta try it. These are available at Best Buy. I'll also drop a link to that below. You guys should check them out. This is the action camera model of their three axis gimbal. Skylab makes another one, which is for phones. It's basically the same product, except that it has a smartphone mount. So all the features, they're all the same. The joystick layout, the power button layout, they all are about the same. So if you wanna get a smartphone three axis gimbal, that's a great option for you as well. And last but not least, let's get to our final three axis gimbal for DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. So today we have the Pilot Fly H2. If you know anything about cameras, especially if you're trying to get a three axis gimbal for a DSLR or mirrorless camera, you'll know that the Pilot Fly H1 was one of the most popular three axis gimbals out there. And the H2 has tons of improvements. And if you wanna check out a great review video and sample footage, Dave Dugdale's done a few videos on that. I'll try to link his channel below. This is just a quick little video to show you some of the best gimbals out there, whether it be for your GoPro, your smartphone, or a DSLR or mirrorless camera. So let's check that one out. Drop a comment below, let me know if you guys like this new living room setup and the sweet new table that I built. All right, let's get into the Pilot Fly H2. And this is how it comes. You get this sweet carrying case. Bit of a tough shell, but still kind of a soft shell. It has a carrying strap, which is actually super handy. The handle is actually a nice handle. And let's just open it up and see what comes inside, guys. So inside you get some instruction manuals, you get warranty info, blah, blah, blah. There's a nice little pouch right here on the top flap. Inside you get a foam insert to kind of protect your gimbal a little bit more. You get a mounting plate. I see a wall charger right here. Definitely need that. Ooh, this guy is the Pilot Fly remote. Actually, this costs extra. It doesn't come with the Pilot Fly H2. But I think it's kind of cool, kind of worth it because I can have my H2 mounted on a tripod and I can wirelessly control it. And I think this guy is around 60 to 70 bucks. A little expensive for a remote, but I've heard it actually works pretty well. So we'll have to test that out. We get a converter plug for the wall outlet. That's pretty cool that they include that. Oh, another converter plug and another converter plug. Very nice, Pilot Fly. All right, we got a micro USB cable in here. And last but not least, the big hunk, the H2, guys. Oh my gosh. Check this out. It's so little. Like I said, Skylab, nice and lightweight, super tiny. 
Pilot Fly H2. Check this out. Right off the bat, I gotta give you guys my first impressions because I've tried the Beholder DS1, I've tried the Ziyun Crane, blah blah blah. Uh, the Ziyun's nice and slim, the Beholder is way too chunky and heavy, and this one's like a solid in-between, but just with such better build quality. Right off the bat, you can just, you feel it, guys. This is solid metal right here. The grip is super nice and ergonomic, actually. So we have joystick right here. We have the mode button where you can change it. There's a ton of modes. You guys can check that out for yourself. There's tons of other videos. Like I said, I'm going to link Dave Dugdale's channel. He did a very in-depth video. You can also click it a certain amount of times to get it centered back up. So if you used your joystick to move around, but you want to get it centered real quick, click it a certain amount of times, it'll go back to center. You have an extra accessory port right here for you to put a monitor arm out over here if you want to, attach your smartphone if you want to, and here is where you charge. There's the charging port, and on the other side, you can also, depending on if you're lefty, righty, whatever, you can put the accessory on the left or right side. There's the on-off switch right there, and guess what? The best part of this, even though it's for large cameras like DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, this is a toolless three axis gimbal. You'll see all these different screws and knobs right here. These let you easily adjust and balance your gimbal. And honestly, the first time I did it, it took about maybe eight to nine minutes just because I really wanted it to be perfect. From then on, it was more of like a four to six minute balance time, and that's about it. And if you keep your camera set up exactly the same, same lens, same mic or no mic, no lens caps, blah, blah, blah. If you keep all that the same, if you balance it once, it really does keep its balance. So you don't really have to do that every single time you shoot, which is awesome. The H1 and the H2, the price difference isn't that big. The H1 is still a great product if you wanna go out and get that one instead of the H2. But one of the biggest things that I know everybody was super excited about with the H2 is that there aren't any wires showing. So it is a super solid product that you don't really have to worry about a wire getting nicked and broken and your seven to thousand dollar gimbal is toast. So it really is up to personal opinion. Like I said, this is just kind of what I use. So of course on my channel, I'm going to share with you guys what I use. But one of the things that I know is super cool about the H2 is that it is future proof because I can actually get a two handle grip and attach it to my H2. So instead of using it with a single handle, I can use two hands, get a more steady shot, more like a Ronin, and it's still lighter than a Ronin. So that's a cool feature to have as well. I'll link that below if you wanna pick up both together. So I have tons of footage of this because I recently shot a couple weddings using this. So let's go ahead and show you some footage with my A7S2. And I believe I also threw on my A7R2 at some point onto this. Show you guys what it looks like on camera and show you guys how smooth that footage is as well. So again, this isn't an informative video teaching you how to use it or all the different crazy features that it has. This is more of a video showcasing to you guys what I personally use and what I think are the best three axis gimbals on the market. So both the Skylab gimbals are actually on sale. So whether you want to get the action camera one right now or the smartphone one for a Christmas gift or something like that, they're 50 bucks off. So they retail at $200. Again, you can get them at Best Buy. And for the Pilot Fly H2, that's a little bit more expensive and prices always range on that. I've seen it go for around 800 to about a thousand bucks. A little bit more expensive, but if you're a professional using a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, and you're trying to get this three axis gimbal for weddings or video shoots, you kind of want to spend that money. And last but not least for 40 bucks, this is kind of cool. So with that $50 that you're saving with the discount, you can get this. It's Skylab's version of a selfie stick, but it's pretty heavy duty. It extends super long like this, and it almost looks like a police baton. It's made out of metal. You've got a nice rubber handle. There's a screw mount on the bottom. You just kind of twist, push it down, or twist, open it up. It telescopes out pretty long, and what's cool about it is 
you can go ahead and throw your 3-axis gimbal right on there and you actually, if you're shooting at a concert or something and you need to get a sweet overhead shot with your gimbal, you can almost use this as a jib. This thing is awesome to have. It's only 40 extra bucks, so I definitely recommend it. Not the cheapest products out there, but 3-axis gimbals, you pay for what you get. So. If you don't want a cheap one, these are ones that I've personally used, love, and can recommend to you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video, all the sample clips that I showed you, and I hope that this helped you guys out a little bit if you were looking for a 3-axis gimbal. These are my personal three favorite 3-axis gimbals, and these are, in my own opinion, what I think are the best on the market right now. If you have a different opinion, or if you use a different one, drop a comment below. Let me know what you use and why you like it so much, and maybe I'll check it out for myself. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tons of videos coming out. Like I said, a holiday slash Christmas gift guide coming soon too, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Jerry Land with Gnome Tech, and to the next one, and beyond. Thank <laughs> you.